Hey, prehistoric crew. It's July 19th today, 2021. Sorry for all the noise. The farmers have their sprinklers going on in their fields. There's no wind today, so at least that's a plus. This is the conical blade cord that I made in the last video. These are all the blades I took off during the flint napping demonstration I did for the team a couple weeks ago. Got some pretty good ones. I gave the best two away to a couple of people who left the project. This is the first crested blade that I took off. I took most of these with direct percussion. That's not a blade. This one I took off from the opposing platform to fix this hinge fracture that I made. I also took off this one from the opposing platform. See, I took off a little bit too much and overshot my platform. I believe I took this one off with indirect percussion. You can see there's a really small platform. The angle was a bit too heavy, so I overshot. Anyways, I got some pretty decent blades off. This is a thicker one, kind of wide. They're not very standardized. I didn't get really good control of the core. Most of these were taken off with direct percussion. Some of them are really thin. Thick platform anyways, but really thin distal end. These are all usable tools in their own right. So like I said, I couldn't get really good control of the core. I was doing things quickly during my demonstration and, ex and explaining things quite a bit. Today I'm gonna try and take off some indirect percussion blades, get better control of these faces, hopefully standardize this core a little bit more. Maybe I can turn it into a pressure blade core a little bit later. I'm going to keep these blades separate from the ones that I take off today. I'm trying to record everything as carefully as I can. Hoping to be able to use these in my experimental analysis stage of the project eventually. For now I'm just replicating the technologies and trying to get as close as I can. One day in the future I'm really going to get a, an experimental project up and running. Take some good morphometric measurements and apply that to the archaeological assemblage to see you know, more closely what kinds of production modes they were using, the level of experience of the nappers, etc. I want to try and take a couple off here first. You can see this face kind of bulges out a little bit.
Maybe I can get one off at an angle this way first. I'm using this as my little indirect antler punch. It's been working pretty well for me so far. Didn't have the angle quite right on that. Probably shouldn't have hit that, but oh well. Not a great start. Let's see if I can do better here. That was a pretty thick one, but it followed the contours of this core face pretty nicely. I wanted a thicker one so that I could get rid of this kind of bulge, make a better face down this way. Nice usable tool there. Try and do the same thing using this ridge. I don't want it to go down quite as far. Still figuring out my angles using this punch. up into a few pieces and hinged out on me, but that's okay. And get one here next. Maybe my platforms are a little strong. I'm not sure exactly.
Not bad, almost went to the distal end. Fixed up that little hinge. Pretty nice contours on this face now. bit of an overhang there I gotta try and fix without taking off too much. Actually the face of the core bulges out pretty heavy there so maybe I can take advantage of this platform. Hold my punch. Normally I would hold it right on the edge there but if I can hold it a little further back, take a slightly thicker flake, get rid of this high spot, that would be good. Platform's not great there. It's pretty splintered up. But maybe I can get one to follow all the way to the distal end of the core here. That's a pretty nice blade. Still not super regular or standardized, but this edge is fairly straight. Got a fairly straight edge here until it curves to the right at the distal end. Managed to take advantage of that platform pretty well. greatest.
try and do something similar here. I don't really want this one to overshoot the distal end, but actually if it does, that would be okay because this isn't the, the best contours there. That was too much. I knew that angle wasn't going to be right. I held the punch a little, little too far this way. I needed to really come back like this and get a more acute angle at it. So that's a pretty classic example of an overshot core, overshot blade, overshooting the distal end of the core here. Distal end of that core was pretty messy anyways. Maybe this is better for the long term. really have to try and adapt with every blade removal here, everything's, it's always different. This the one needed a bit of shaping. After being overshot. platform's still not great. There's still some kind of cortical faulty surface right here. Maybe if I can take a small flake off here and then I should have a nice platform to come down this way. Might be okay now. I need to angle this a little bit this way, but I would like to overshoot this part. Come down to here. Fix up that face a little better. Try and get my angles better on this one. Okay, that was not bad. Went to more or less where I wanted it. You can see that's a really curved blade. Not very regular edges at all, but still usable for something.
Now I'd like to try and get one here, but see, the contours aren't great, so if I can try and fix this up with a few flakes, I should. Not the best angle. That's messy now. It really does not look great. Well, here goes nothing. Now if I can get this blade off, it'll technically be a crested blade. Even though it's not related to the initial shaping of the core. It's more of a maintenance type crested blade might be kind of difficult to identify that in an archaeological assemblage but as you can see that's part of the process at least for a flint napper who's not super experienced in making these blade cores Again, it's not the best platform. Go, not too bad. Single verdant crested blade. French term, so it's probably pronounced Verdun. My French isn't the greatest, forgive my pronunciation. off two separate flakes there. Strange. I can make a really nice small thumbnail scraper.
I'm gonna try and take off this one. If I can make it kind of wide, it would have a somewhat decent trapezoidal cross section on it. A little bit thick at the end, but that was more or less what I wanted. Got another small one that came off right beside it. Must have double hit the platform a little bit. Hope this is all showing up on camera. Kind of adjusted myself a little bit at the start of the video without checking the, the frame again. I always make that mistake. be a tough angle to work with but I want to try and take off this blade see if I can tackle this messy spot a little bit definitely won't be able to turn this into a larger pressure blade core but maybe I can use my little bone stabilizer, turn it into a handheld micro blade lit core when this is all done. That's what they were doing in the Neolithic at Chateauhuic here where I work. They made large blade cores and then when they got smaller they kind of changed the technique they used to remove blades. I think a lot of them were roughed out using direct percussion the initial blades taken off with direct and then they did something similar to what i'm doing here taking off indirect percussion blades until the core got really small and then they would transition to a handheld pressure blade technique pressure blade lit technique So like I said, this platform isn't great, so I'm going to have to really hold this steady and hit this really hard, I think. I'd have to try for a direct percussion blade on it. This isn't going to work very well. Or I'll end up overshooting the core because the angle isn't right. Yep, another overshot. It's okay, this is all a learning experience for me, really. Showing you all how some of these cores were reduced. And actually, that gives a nice contour to this face now. Try and get this back on so I can show you how it came off. So it broke into three pieces. 
can see that was a really heavy platform on it. I had to take too much of an angle so that it would come off. But I kind of expected it to overshoot. This thick one would make a good little scraper. This one's not really good for anything. Take some little micro bladelets off of it. I think I'm almost at the point where I don't want to do anything more to this core. This was really just for demonstration purposes. Teaching myself the process more than anything so that I can apply it in the future for proper experiments. I would like to try and take this blade off, but that's a really bad platform angle and that's not going to work. Maybe I can take this one off first. is getting much smaller, it's a little tricky to hold now. That was a pretty good one. Almost all the way to the distal end. Pretty curved because it's a small core now. fairly authentic looking for the early to middle level cores at this site. The late and final levels were really standardized. They took really regular pressure blades off of them. But this is definitely a usable blade. I didn't really have to do much with the platform on this because I took a big scooping flake at first, which just allowed me to really just work on preparing the faces of the core and then giving it a good grind. It's kind of a more or less a single faceted platform. I didn't have to take any large platform rejuvenation flakes. I just took thicker blades down the faces. I think I'll try and take one here next. My antlers really dried out. I was worried that this was a large crack forming, but I I think it'll be okay. I don't think it's a crack, just a fault in the surface of it.
These blades are definitely thicker than I would want. But you can tell that they're indirect percussion because they have a very small platform and then they widen out really quickly. Fairly straight edges on them. It's almost impossible to do that with direct percussion. Nice pile of usable blades forming down there. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to leave this as is. I don't want to take off everything. I want to kind of leave it as an example of what a core looks like after blades have been taken off. Yeah, I don't really want to mess with this too much more. Maybe I can try and put all the blades back on and tie them up with an elastic or something. So the sequence of blade removals make it kind of cool. There's all the good ones that came off so far. Most of them stayed in one piece. I think is an effect of using indirect percussion rather than direct percussion to take these off. You can see there's all different sizes. This is probably the best one that I removed today. It's pretty small, but it's a cool looking core, I think. I'm going to leave it like that. can probably do some shaping on this thing and use it as a hafted end scraper, rounded end scraper. I think they generally used overshot or plunging flakes for their end scrapers. Provide some nice thick durability to the working end. This would be the hafted end. Maybe I'll try and make something like that before the end of the season. I really want to take some of these blades and turn them into working tools, hafted tools, though I don't have any authentic glue. I need to make something. Boil down some hide, make some hide glue, or something like that. I don't really have access to any tree sap, so it would be difficult to make some pitch, but I can try and do that too. We've got a larch and some cedar trees in the courtyard, maybe I can use those. Otherwise, we're surrounded by poplar trees, so not much in the way of options for making a pitch pitch glue. Anyways, that's how I'm going to finish this video today. That was pretty fun taking off all these blades. You can see how much usable edge there is compared to the waste debris generated. I love that about blade cores. They're very efficient use of the stone, even if I didn't you know, remove these in the most efficient way. The shape of the core allows for quite, quite efficient removals of blades with straight edges compared to say, you know, a multi-directional flake core or the flakes that come off during biface production. All of these can be used as is and with a little bit of pressure flaking they can be shaped into Lots of different things. Some of these could even make projectiles. 
Not quite, it would need a lot of shaping, but that's what pressure flaking is for. Anyways, as always, thanks for joining me here at Prehistoric Living. Brought to you today from Neolithic Chatelhuyuk in Turkey, UNESCO site where I've been working since 2012. This year I'm working as the field director for excavations and also chipstone analyst. So like I said before, I don't have a lot of time for my experimental stuff, but luckily I'm on holiday this week. It's Bayram, the religious holiday. So I finally get some time to do this. All right, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.